a cold December morning at Welcome Collection. Today, some of Henry Welcome's most treasured residents are making a unique journey across London. En route, two other crates are collected from a facility that houses an array of medical curios from Welcome's immense collection. The destination, the Royal Brompton Hospital, where imaging technology will reveal more about these unique individuals. The mummies are accompanied by experts from the British Museum, who are using the scans to investigate who these people were and how they might have died. Each mummy is placed on a table and passed through the CT scanner. The scanner captures tomographs, cross-section images of each body and reveals in detail the internal organs, blood vessels and bones. So how were these mummies acquired by Welcome Collection? Ross McFarlane is an engagement officer at Welcome Library and has uncovered one of the original auction catalogues, a record that reveals more about the possible history of the older Peruvian mummy. So what I've got in front of me here is an auction catalogue from August 6, 1924 from Stevens's auction house. It says, these figures are believed to be the only ones in Europe. The mummified body of Guaymaral, son of Mara, the chief of Moracaibo, who was trussed and buried alive for eloping with the daughter of chief of a neighbouring tribe, exhumed on 13 September 1910. And also, uh, the other object is uh, depicted as the mummified body of Chief Cucactus's daughter, above referred to. So from the auction catalogue, this description that may have been slightly enhanced by the uh, auctioneers themselves, um, suggests a body of a male figure and a body of a female figure. And looking at the other uh, object, the other figure that we have that's held off site, we believe that to be female. So there may well be truth in this slightly embellished account that we have in the Stevens auction catalogue. I think Welcome was attracted to these objects, possibly due to their availability. Welcome had networks of collectors. He purchased other collections that became available during his lifetime. But I think it can be very difficult to ascertain precisely why these examples. I would suggest because they were in good condition would have been of interest to Welcome, but ultimately they would have filled a gap in his collections. And we have to remember how vast Welcome's collections actually were, how many items he purchased. And also think of the fact that so many of the items that came into his collections, he would never have actually seen. Um, they would have remained stored away as a welcome and his staff worked out the final scheme for their proper display. Once the CT images are reconstructed and rendered, they're loaded into a large touchscreen interface that allows the team to explore the detailed anatomy of each mummy. John Taylor is an expert in ancient Egyptian archaeology at the British Museum. He explains more about what they've discovered in the Egyptian infant. At first, there were questions as to whether this mummy was really authentic. Was there actually a body inside the wrappings? Um, and this is quite a serious question because there are fake mummies uh, in a number of museums around the world. And often these fake mummies are made to look like the bodies of children. However, Looking at the wrappings of this mummy, 
There's no indication that there has been any interference. The style of wrapping is consistent with what you would expect for an ancient body. And looking underneath the wrappings with the CT scans, we can see that there is a complete body of a child inside there. And everything that we can tell about the way the child has been preserved suggests that this is genuinely ancient. One of the most important things we've learned from these scans is how old this child was. We can tell this by looking at the state of development of the bones and the teeth in particular. And what this indicates is that the child died very soon after birth, so probably only a few months into its life. Another important fact is that we can see the child is a boy. Um, the soft tissue is very well preserved and you can see evidence of this. Uh, and again, it's often not possible to uh, identify the sex of a child mummy because the preservation is not good enough. Uh, in this case, we're very, very lucky that that preservation is very good. Although not wrapped in bandages, the Peruvian Chimu mummy also proved to be very well preserved. Daniel Antoine is a curator of physical anthropology at the British Museum. He explains what the scans revealed. The most important thing we discovered is how remarkably well preserved this mummy is. Uh, it was buried probably at very high altitude where there's very little moisture in the air. This very arid environment would have desiccated, naturally desiccated the mummy. So unlike uh, some of the other South American mummies or Egyptian mummies which have been artificially mummified, in this case is what we tend to describe as natural mummification. Even though it's a natural mummy that appears to just simply dry it out in the very arid conditions, uh, both the, uh, the skin but also internally the internal organs, including uh, I think part of the brains, but certainly the heart, the lungs and some of the digestive tract are wonderfully preserved. But one of the key things we were able to confirm with this particular mummy was that it was actually, it is a male individual. The soft tissue preservation is so good that we were able to confirm that indeed it was a male. It's probably a young man in uh, between the ages of 20 to 35. But again, more work needs to be done to clarify that, looking at the wear and tear in his, in his joints, especially the, the pubic symphysis. One of the interesting features we were able to discover, which actually you can see uh, because the mummy's mouth is slightly open, is that the incisors, the teeth at the front of the mouth, have these ridges called shoveling, which is typical of South American populations. In this case, the ridges are present on the front of the tooth and on the back of the tooth. Simon Hilson is a professor of bioarchaeology at University College London and has been examining the scans of the basket mummy. It's a child of around 12 years of age, uh, mostly from the evidence of the teeth which are still developing. This particular mummy does have some remains of cloth inside the, inside the abdomen which suggests that there was some work in preparation of the body a lot of the adult ones are wrapped in a textile. Sometimes it may be a textile that was woven specially for the burial. It's often very elaborate. It was the men who, de who did the weaving, as I understand it. And um, I've seen mummies which are buried with weaving equipment. It was a high status thing to, to be a, a weaver. So you, you go from that kind of thing to um, wrappings in reeds, in baskets, in plain cloth and so on, but there usually is some kind of wrapping. Scanning the mummies has revealed fascinating discoveries into how these people lived and died. This stunning imagery is now available to uncover in the interactive explorer table located in the reading room at Wellcome Collection. For more information, go to wellcomecollection.org forward slash reading room.